Stop. Hi, Susie. Where's your Tasty Tuesday show? It's Tuesday. Try me some Tasty. Sometimes it works. We're making bagels today. I hope you can deal with that. It's morning still because daylight savings time has ended and that's really cool. It makes me feel so much more productive even though I didn't have to change my schedule at all. Hell yeah. Slap it high. So we're making bagels today. I saw this bagel recipe on Lauren Toyota from Hot For Foods Instagram a billion times and I've never wanted a bagel more. It looks amazing. A bagel isn't something that I've ever thought that I could make on my own. It's always been like something that you buy from the store in a bag. Like I didn't even put together that a person can make them. I guess a person does make them when you go to a bagel shop, but I just didn't think about that person making them. It's just like bagels are just there. They're just a thing that's there. So when I found out you could make them at home, I was like, well, hell yeah, we have to try that. It's morning, so we're gonna make it because it's morning and it's a breakfast food and it's morning. So happy morning. Good morning. Let's make this dish. Step one, we're gonna start by making the cream cheese. And you don't have to make the cream cheese. You can buy cream cheese from the store. There are also so many non-dairy cream cheeses you can buy, but if you want to make them, which I do because I'm so curious about this recipe, this is what you could do. Hot for food suggest that you take one package of a 450 gram package of firm tofu drained and like kind of padded dry like the excess stuff. It doesn't have to be completely pressed and also it's better if you get the tofu that's in water and not the kind that's like bone dry vacuum sealed so you're welcome. Take that tofu put it in a blender then we're gonna add two tablespoons of lemon juice which for me was just one lemon. Two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, two garlic cloves, one teaspoon onion powder, a teaspoon garlic powder, and teaspoon sea salt, a fourth a teaspoon white pepper, and and a fourth cup plus one tablespoon of melted coconut oil. We're gonna blend all of that stuff in a high speed blender. Probably gonna have to use the baton thing to make sure that it gets really, really smooth. And then voila, you got yourself a mixture that is not the consistency of cream cheese, but it sure does taste like it. We're gonna fold in some herbs. We got a tablespoon of dill, a tablespoon of basil, and a tablespoon and a half of finely chopped chives. It also suggests adding, well it suggests, it tells you to add thyme, it's not an optional thing. Thing, but I don't have it, so I'm opting out. Uh, but a half teaspoon of fresh thyme if you have it. I would have gotten it, but I was out of thyme. <sighs> Please like me. So that's in our fridge right now, chilling for four hours. On to the bagels. Here we go. I am shook. This really does taste exactly like cream cheese and even better than some a lot most uh, all. All of the non-dairy cream cheeses that I've ever tasted in stores. Holy shit. Thank you for this recipe, Laura Toyota. Wow. The consistency is not quite there yet. It's not quite a cream cheese texture, but it says to chill in the fridge for at least four hours. So I'm gonna put that in the fridge now. We won't get to try it until four hours, but I will keep you posted. Well, do it. To make these bagels, we're gonna be using a stand mixer to make our bagels today, I know, right? About time. And into our stand mixer, we are gonna put four cups of bread flour. You ever have bread flour? Not me. But I was reading online that you could take regular flour and mix it with vital wheat gluten, which I do have, weirdly. I think I've used this one time and it's still in my cabinet, so I had it. You substitute a teaspoon and a half of vital wheat gluten for each cup of flour that you're putting in. So we're putting in four cups of flour. So that's six teaspoons of vital wheat gluten. We love it. Do it. Hopefully this is four cups. It might not be. Ah! I want things to work. I just want to do a good job. Oh my god, please be four cups. I didn't really know I was gonna need that many cups. I just saw flour as an ingredient and I was like, yeah, I have that. One, two, three, four. Yay, we did have four cups. That's so awesome. Oh my gosh, I love it. Yay! Woo! I was not ready to have less than four cups. Next, we're gonna take out six teaspoons of regular flour. What do we put this? Put it into like one of these measuring cups maybe? We're taking out one, two, six teaspoons. Now we're gonna put in six teaspoons of that wheat gluten. Again, if you have bread flour, you don't need to do all of this. Good for you, brag about it. Six. And we're just gonna stir it all in there. You know, maybe whisk it in there. Let's whisk it in there. Yeah, that's better. To our flour, we are also gonna add a tablespoon of sugar, a teaspoon of sea salt, and two and one fourth teaspoons of rapid rise yeast, or fast rising yeast, which is like one packet. And we're gonna use our stand mixer with a dough hook. Look at us using professional things. Never thought it would happen, huh? And then. <laughs> It says until well mixed. I don't know what that means. I mean, if everything looks kind of the same amount of mix. I guess it's well mixed. Let's move on to the next step. We're gonna add one and a half cups of warm water. Not hot, because we don't want to kill our yeast. Want to keep them alive, but warm. I'm looking for a measuring cup in case you're wondering where I'm going all weirdly. This is how I look. Here it is, see? It works. Warm water. While our 
mixer's on low, we're gonna add the water. And also, a tablespoon of vegetable oil. Whoa, hey, you calm down. Take it easy, not that exciting. It's just bread. Dude, my sand mixer is so amped to make bagels right now. You're so excited, jeez. Once it's coming away from the side, we're gonna gradually increase the speed slowly as the mixture comes together to form the dough. Okay, be going. Turn it up, turn up. You're so excited. Yeah. Right, I'm gonna move my camera off this table. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, you need to move on, go down a little bit. We're kneading this until the dough is, oh my God. It, okay, stop. Too much. Okay, maybe we added too much flour. This is not sticky at all. I'm gonna add a little bit more water. Just a little bit more water to this. Okay, it wasn't sticky enough, it was a little bit too dry, so I added some more water, and now we're gradually increasing the speed again. Once the dough starts pulling away from the sides, we want to be on a higher speed for a while until the dough is not super, super, super sticky. Which, in my case, it wasn't sticky at all, so I had to change things. This is intense. Skip to the part where we're done with this. Okay, now we've got a dough ball that is smooth and slightly sticky, but not sticky enough that it's sticking to our hands. It is perfect. Also, really recommend to have a dough hook attachment with a stand mixer. Otherwise, you have to do all of that by hand. Don't. We gotta get our bowl onto a clean surface. Just a light dusting on that surface. Excuse me. Thank you, Mr. Dough Hook. Okay. Clean surface. You, dough. You don't need a ton of flour for this. You just need like a little dusting of flour. Ooh, we'll just use the flour that we took out of the six teaspoons, you know what I mean? What a light dusting this is. Great, good job me. Then, what are we doing? We're gonna take a baking sheet and put parchment paper on it. You've done this before. And we're gonna preheat our oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. Look at that, what a hot little oven. Yeah, I'm checking you out, oven. Then what? Next we're gonna cut our ball of dough in half. Right down the middle there. And then we're gonna cut the those halves in half, and then we're gonna cut those halves in half. So we got eight little dough balls. Okay, and then we're gonna roll each little one into a ball shape. You could knead it to get it smooth if you want. I don't know, that's about as smooth as I'm gonna get. Next, we're gonna take each little dough ball and we're gonna punch a hole through it with our thumbs. I know, it's kinda mean, kinda messed up, but that's what we do, that's how bagels are made, you wanted to know. Then we're gonna take our two fingers and we're gonna stretch the hole. Ayo, until it gets bigger and more bagel shaped. The hole should be pretty big because it's gonna get puffy in the oven, so make sure your hole is very stretched. <laughs> Grow up. Okay, I think maybe it's big enough. I don't know. I don't wanna look online for help. I think this is big enough. Okay, I'm gonna put it on parchment paper. And we're gonna do that eight times. Hope you like hole stretching. These bagels are a whole mood. All right, I'll see you after this is done. Okay, once we got our little bagels with holes in them, we're gonna put a damp towel over this and let them rise for 15 to 20 minutes. They don't have to double in size, but they should like 50% in size. Kind of like me over the past 10 years. What, bye. While our bagels are rising, I put together a plate of everything that's gonna go on them, which is two tablespoons of sunflower seeds, two tablespoons of black poppy seeds, two tablespoons of white sesame seeds, two tablespoons of garlic powder, and two tablespoons of onion powder. Now it's said in the recipe granulated onion and granulated garlic, but I didn't know what that meant, so I just did the powders. I hope it's okay. Here's this, so this is good. Also, put together this like mock egg wash, which is two tablespoons of non-dairy milk and one fourth teaspoon of brown sugar. Also, I've been quite busy. I have a big old pot and there are two quarts of water boiling in here, plus a teaspoon baking soda and a teaspoon of brown sugar. Our bagels should be ready to do things soon. Hold up. Okay, it's been somewhere between 15 and 20 minutes our bagels wow they did rise about 50% good job guys very proud of you so now we're just waiting for this water to boil and here's what I was reading basically we're gonna take each bagel dip it into the rapid boiling water for about a minute each flipping halfway in that time remove with a slotted spoon onto a wire rack over another baking sheet to drain excess water okay I don't have a wire rack but I did find this like little mini steamer rack for a rice cooker each bagel gets its individual wire rack. It's just one. Maybe we'll go one at a time. Great. Good, 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 good. Hey, water! You ready to get the show on the road? Damn. Why gotta take so long? Okay, first bagel going in. I wish you the best. Second bagel going in. This reminds me of when we made pretzels. Pretzels, I also did not think were something that I could make at home. How do I flip these halfway through? Mm, how do I get it out? It says with a slotted spoon. Okay, okay, okay. Slotted spoon. Got it, got it. I'm gonna put you on your little miniature wire rack. Cool. I don't have a wire rack for you. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. I'm just gonna put you on paper towels. <laughs> Hopefully that works for you. Man, I don't wanna wait for each one of these to be on a wire rack. Their own little mini wire rack. I guess they're all going on paper. 
paper towels. Except for that first one. Lucky you. Okay, we're gonna do that eight times. Do it. Okay, paper towels weren't working, so I put the rest of these guys on like a little steamer. This is so janky, but I hope it works. You guys look cool. I mean, you're not gonna lie, you look real cool. Now what we're gonna do is take our egg wash and we're gonna brush it over the top of all of our little bagels. Give them a nice little wash. I don't know how generous to be with this, so I'm being very generous. Next, you guessed it. We're gonna take the tops of our bagels that got egg washed and we're gonna dip them into our plate of everything. Making sure they get nice and coated. Very nice and coated. Look at that, that looks like a bagel. What? How do we do that? That's tight. And then we gotta put it somewhere. <laughs> then we're gonna put it on a baking sheet with parchment paper. This one's a little busy. This one's kind of busy too. Hold up, hold up, hold up. All right, there we go. We're gonna put it on a sheet of parchment paper on a baking sheet. You're probably gonna want two baking sheets because these become big old boys in the oven. They're already big old boys, but they become even bigger boys. Boom. Okay, all our bagels are done. Now we're gonna bake them for 20 to 22 minutes. Cool. Hi, bye babies. This one turned out the most bagel-y. I'll show them to you later. It's cool. 20 to 22 minutes. See you then. The timer just went off. That means our bagels are ready. Well, they're not ready. They need to cool. Then, ooh, they're golden brown. What? Oh, these look like bagels! <gasps> I'm legit like so excited. Whoa, I'm like really proud of us. By that I mean me, I did this. Lauren Toyota probably helped, but I did this. <laughs> okay, oh my goodness. Uh, so these are supposed to cool on a wire rack, which you already know we don't have here in this kitchen, but I'll just let them cool there. Probably will take a little bit longer, but they'll get there. Let's turn off our oven. That's a good step to do. So we're gonna wait for these to cool down. I don't know how long that's gonna take. We also have to wait for the cream cheese to get to the right consistency so I'll see you in like an hour and then we'll have bagels it's not morning anymore so I'm so stupid I didn't turn the mic back on we all tried it everybody tried it Steve loves the bagel but then he thought there were too many herbs in the cream cheese so but he likes it but with no not as many herbs Nate liked everything I liked everything but I would say less dill in the cream cheese all the other herbs were fine this is like the end of American graffiti and it's like Steve like died in a car crash three years later exactly like that Nate went on to be an Aerospace engineer. Wow. Worked Sounds out real great for him. <laughs> yeah, but it's like, Steve didn't like herbs in his cream cheese. Yeah, right. <laughs> Nate liked all of it. <laughs> Nikki said less dill. Nikki said way less dill. She also married a sports star. I wish, man. I wish too. <laughs> All right, well, you missed a really good review and reaction of it. Here's a clip of it with no sound. See, it's really good. That so really good. it would have been really tight, but you missed it. Anyway, it's tasty. That's all you need to know. Also, I'm just like shook at how you can make an actual bagel. I did not know you could make that in your house or your home. I thought you could only get it in a bag at the store. And I I'm... knew that you could make them. Go away. Go. I mean, see you later. I'll, I'll see you later, Steve. You. Okay, bye. bye. Get out of here. All right, bye, Steve. Get out of here. I was going to leave anyway and wash my hands. Bye. What an annoying guy that one is, huh? Uh, that's awkward. I'm so awkward.